إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam we all know that our religion the religion of Islam is based on five pillars the very first and the most important pillar of the religion of Islam is the Tawheed of Allah Dhul Jalal Al Ikram the testimony and the declaration of the oneness of Allah Dhul Jalal Al Ikram and the messengership of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh to testify that there is no worthy of worship except Allah Dhul Jalal Al Ikram alone and to testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's servant and his last and final prophet. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, although the tawheed of Allah and believing in the messengership of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most important pillar of Islam, but unfortunately vast majority of the Muslims, they have neglected this very first pillar of Islam. We have neglected, we never understood the concept of Tawheed, how to believe in Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram. We do not even know the names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if one of us tries to memorize the simply the Asma'ul Husna, the names of Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram, we do not even try to understand the meaning of the names of Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram. If we were to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we come to know that there are so many ayat in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ended them with his beautiful names. Al-Ghafoor, Al-Rahim, Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim, Al-Alim, Al-Halim. So many names of Allah dhul jalal ikram are mentioned at the end of the verses of the Quran. We never try to understand the names and the meanings of the names of Allah Dhul Jalal Al Ikram. And this is one of the core reasons that we are facing so many problems in our life. You might say, how is it linked to our problems? This is very simple to understand because Allah Dhul Jalal Al Ikram is our creator. He is the one who has created us. And he has told us the purpose of our creation in the Quran. Allah says, I have never created the jinn and mankind except that they worship me alone. So this is the sole purpose of our creation. Allah Jalal Ikram has created us to worship him, Dhul Jalal Ikram subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And if we do not fulfill this purpose, and in order for us to fulfill this purpose, we have to know Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram, then it means that we are in trouble. We are in trouble and we are destroying our own lives. That is why we go through so many trials and tribulations and problems and hardships in our life. And we try to find the solutions 
other than the Tawheed of Allah Jalali Wal Ikram. If we were to truly connect ourselves with our Creator Allah Jalal Ikram, all the problems and all the hardships that we have in our life, they will be all gone. And in order to understand this, I would like to share with you the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Very powerful hadith that is reported by Imam Al-Tirmidhi, Imam Ahmad and many other muhaddithin and even Imam Al-Nawawi rahimahullah. He has quoted in his small book Arba'in Al-Nawawiyya, the 40 hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught or the hadith that is narrated by the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was known as Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhum. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhum. He was the son of the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Abbas. And he was known amongst the companions of Ridwanullahi al Majma'een, the best person who understood the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Mufassir of the Quran, amongst the companions. That is why he was known as Hebrul Ummah. He was known as the greatest scholar of the Quran in the Ummah. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala. Whenever the Mufassirun, they have dispute or difference of opinion with regards to any verse of the Quran, the final and the most authentic statement is considered the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas and his explanation is given the priority over other explanations. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he was only 13 years old when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi passed away. And look at the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instilled in him the love for the tawheed of Allah dhul jalali wal ikram. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhumah says, Kuntu radif al sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once I was riding on the beast behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called me and he said, Ya ghulam, O oh young man. And I said, Labbaika ya Rasulullah. I'm here, O oh Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh young man, I'm going to teach you some beautiful and very important words of advice. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he was ready to accept. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ghulam, Short, concise statement, but very powerful. If we were to truly understand this short statement and this short hadith and this, this, and this very first part of the hadith, it would be sufficient for us to resolve all the problems. Rasulullah said, O oh young man, be mindful of Allah. Or it can also be translated as protect Allah, although Allah does not need our protection. But it means something else. Protect Allah means that be mindful of Allah, Dul Jalal Ikram. Be in mind always that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has created you. And Allah has given you the life for something very important, which is the worship of Allah. Every single breath that Every single breath that you take in this dunya, in this life, it is precious. Ihfadillah. Be mindful of Allah. Remember Allah. Never forget Allah. When you deal with people, never forget Allah. When you are at home, never forget Allah. When you are at business, never forget Allah. When you are awake, never forget Allah. When you are sitting, never forget Allah. When you are lying down, never forget Allah. While you're walking on the street, never forget Allah. Ihfadillah. Remember Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Always be in mind that Allah is the one who is basir. Who is the, he is the one who is watching you. He's all watching. 
He is Khabir. He is all knowing. He knows every single act that you do. He knows everything. He is Alimun Bidat Sudur. He even knows what goes on within your heart. You do not know what you are going to do tomorrow, but He knows. You never know when you are going to die, but He knows. You don't know where you are going to die, but He knows. You don't know where your provision will come from, but He knows. Al Alim, Al Khabir, Al Basir, Al Samir. Ihfadillah. Remember Allah. Be mindful of Allah. And you ask yourself, my brother and sister in Islam, if you were to truly be mindful of Allah, would there be any problem in our life? What will be acting upon the religion of Allah the way we are doing now? No, wallah, it will be completely different. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also warned us. He has warned us in the Quran against forgetting Allah if we were to forget Allah the consequences are severe and very harmful and very dangerous Allah says in Surah Al-Hashr O believers don't be like those who forgot Allah and then what was the outcome what did it result into? فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ And then when they forgot Allah, Allah made them forget their own selves. If you forget Allah, Allah makes you forget your own self. You keep yourself busy with the matters of the dunya with the, and you always preoccupied with the problems and you never find the solution. Problem after problem, difficulty after difficulty. But you never try to come back to Allah. You never try to remember Allah. You never try to fulfill the purpose for which Allah has created you. Allah says in the Quran that the criminals and the sinners. And the wicked ones, they will be said on the day of judgment, Allah will say to them on the day of judgment that today we are going to forget you the similar way you forgot us in the dunya. Remember Allah. Never forget Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Yahfavk. And then the solution or the benefit of this is that Allah will never forget you. Allah will never forget you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sarrahu an yastajeeb Allahu lahu fi shadaid fal yukthir dua fi rakha. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Know Allah in times of ease and comfort and prosperity. So that Allah will know you in times of difficulties and hardships. This is a simple solution. You need to come back to Allah. Be mindful of Allah. Ihfadillah. Protect Allah, be mindful of Allah, remember Allah, never forget Allah, yahfaz, so that Allah Ikram will never forget you. Ihfadillaha tajidhu tujahak. Be mindful of Allah, always remember Allah, tajidhu tujahak. You will always find Allah in front of you. Whenever you are afflicted by any test, by any calamity, by any problem, any difficulty in your life, you'll have strong trust in Allah that you will believe and you will see that Allah is in front of you. Allah is there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there to help you and to protect you. 
And this is the promise of Allah Jalal Ikram. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continued teaching Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma his advice. He said, Wa'lam Anna al-Ummah. And in, in, in fact, before this, he Sallallahu said, Ida sa'alta fas'alillah wa ida sta'anta fasta'in billah. O young man, whenever you need to ask, ask Allah alone. And whenever you need help and assistance, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance alone. And this is my dear brother and sister Islam, what we say in our salah, in every, in every single rakah. When we recite Surah Al-Fatiha, what do we say? إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Oh Allah, you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help and assistance. But why is this that when we complete the salah, we try to find the assistance and help from others. And we come back to Allah on the last resort. When we know that there is no solution, no way out. Then we say, now I have given up and I have left my affairs with Allah. Why did you not say this at the first place? As soon as you are afflicted by any calamity and hardship and difficulty, why did you not say at that time? I left my affairs with Allah. Amri Allah. I rely on Allah. I, I, I put my trust in Allah. And then he sallallahu said, Wa'lam anna al ummata law ijtama'at ala an yanfa'uka bi shay'in lan yanfa'uka illa bi shay'in qad katabahu Allah lak. O young man, be sure and believe and know and bear in mind that if the whole nation, the whole creation of Allah were to, to get together, if they were to come together to benefit you with something very little and minor, they cannot benefit you with anything at all except with that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed and written for you. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ And know that if the whole nation, whole creation of Allah comes together to harm you with anything لَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ They cannot harm you with anything except with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed and written for you. And this is the belief, this is the tawheed of Allah that our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam has taught. But unfortunately, as I said at the beginning, we forgot all these teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We have gone so weak in our iman, so weak in our iman, that we have so many superstitions and wrong beliefs and misconceptions and misunderstanding of the oneness of Allah. We never understood our Lord, our Creator, Allah Dhul Jalali Ikram. For example, in this particular month, the month of Safar. This month, the month of Safar, is the second month in the Islamic calendar, in the Hijri calendar. And this month, the month of Safar comes after three sacred months. Dhul Hijjah, Dhul Qada, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram consecutive three sacred months in which fighting is not allowed and also other sins all those sins are sins always but committing them in sacred months is even more dangerous and harmful so then this month the month of suffer comes the pagans of Mecca the pagans of Arab the mushrikeen before and during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they also believed in the sacred of these three months, Dhul Qada, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram. But what did they do? They obviously, they used to have continuous fight and war and conflict amongst the tribes. They would continue fighting each other throughout the year. And as soon as this one of the sacred months would come, they would stop. They would stop their war. And 
it had become very difficult for them to hold on the anger for consecutive three months. So they could stop, they would stop the war and the conflict and fighting and killing each other for two months, patiently. Dhul Qada and Dhul Hijjah. And as soon as the month of Dhul Hijjah would come to an end and the month of Muharram would come, they would say that we are now going to exchange the sacredness of the month of Muharram with the Safar. They would say, let's hold on to our weapons and start the fight and, and resume the war again within the month of Muharram and we'll fight for one month for a couple of weeks and then when the month of Safar comes, we'll stop the war once again. And then because of this, their own wrongdoing, they had the belief that the month of Safar is the month of misfortune. And this is the month of bad omen. And they, had, they used to have so many misunderstandings or misconceptions or even superstitions with regards to the month of Safar. And unfortunately, this continued all the way from the time of Jahiliyyah, from the time of the pagans of the Arab until today amongst the Muslims. Na'udhu Billahi Billahi. If you go to an Indian subcontinent, you will come to know that people, so-called Muslims, they believe the month of Safar is not good for them. That is why many of them, they do not hold and they do not arrange any wedding or any ceremony or they do not even celebrate any kind of happiness within this particular month. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had negated it. He said, La Safar, there is no harm of the month of Safar. Safar, the month of Safar is nothing other than that this is the month that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has created. And it is not there to harm you. But because of the weak iman and not understanding the tawheed of Allah and not having the trust in Allah Dhul Jalal Al Ikram, the Muslim has gone so low in the iman to the level that they think that the month of suffer, these days and nights, they can harm them. Not only this, amongst the Muslims, we find very strange things, very strange superstitions. For example, people believe that when a newborn child is born, then we have to keep the child within the house for a couple of months and we should not take him out of the house, otherwise he will be afflicted by evil eyes. People sometimes, unfortunately, and this is something that I myself, I have seen in Pakistan that people, they hang some kind of leaves on the door. So they believe that no, the evil witches cannot enter into the house. They sometimes leave the knife underneath the pillow of the newborn child to protect him from the evil eye. Is this Islam? At night, if you see black cat passing by yourself, and you see this is the bad omen. You see the crow making the noise on the roof of your house. You believe that today we are going to have some guests. Someone sneezes and you say, it means that someone has remembered me. What is this? Na'udhu billahi min dhal. Is this Iman? Is this Islam? Is this the understanding of the Tawheed of Allah? We have gone so weak to the level that when we are afflicted by any calamities or hardships or when we are faced by difficult times rather than turning, returning to Allah Jalal Ikram we go to saints and the shrines. People go there, so-called Muslims. They go to prostrate, to make sujood and tawaf and they give on the name of other than Allah, they give on the names of the shrines, they give on the name of the saints, they call upon them, they try to please them, believing that if they please them, Allah will be pleased with them. 
This is the concept and these are the beliefs of so-called Muslims. Na'udhu billahi min that. So the Muslims, they have left and they have lost complete trust in Allah dhul jalal ukram. And this is one of the core reasons. This is one of the fundamental cause of our problem overall as a Muslim ummah. And unfortunately, when we look at the situation of the ummah, every one of us, we weep and we cry and we moan that Muslims have gone so far from the religion of Allah and we are oppressed by the enemies of Islam and we even criticize our own rulers. What does the ruler has to do with your iman, with your trust in Allah? You are so disconnected with your Lord. What does the ruler have to do here? How many rulers have stopped you from performing your five daily prayers? Is this the ruler that instructs you, uh, that instructs you and orders you and commands you to go to the shrines and call upon other than Allah? We try to find the solutions other than the religion of Allah. Other than the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which can, which can never be fulfilled. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the point is that we need to turn back to Allah. We need to understand in first and foremost the Tawheed of Allah dhul jalal ikram. We need to understand and we need to know our Lord Allah dhul jalal wal ikram. Ma qadarullah haqqa qadri. Allah says in the Quran, these people, they never understood Allah. They never understood Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram. If you were to truly know and understand your creator, your khaliq and your malik and your sustainer, your nourisher, your maker, your Lord Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram, you'll have strong trust in him Dhul Jalal Ikram. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala at very young age. When he is a very young boy, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught him this concept of Tawheed and Tawakkul in Allah Dhul Jalal Wikra. And just imagine my dear brother and sister Islam, if we were to teach the same lesson to our own children at very young age, instill in their mind that nothing can harm them except what Allah has decreed for them. Nothing and no one can benefit them except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for them. Then when they grow up, they know their iman, they know their belief, and they will be protected by the permission of Allah dhul jalal ikram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to understand his tawheed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to rectify our mistakes and our errors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to act upon the religion the way that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with innahu sami'un qareebun mujib. Inna alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati amalina ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh amma ba'd My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us in the Quran for his help and for his assistance. Allah says, وَكَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It is haq and wajib and compulsory upon us that we help the believers. إِنَّا لَنَنْصُرُ رُسُولَنَا وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْأَشْهَادِ Allah says, verily, we do help our messengers and those who believed in us in this dunya and on the day of judgment as well. This is the promise of Allah. The help of Allah is for the believers. But the question is, are we true believers? Do we truly believe in the oneness of Allah? Do we truly turn back to Allah when we are afflicted by calamities and hardships? If not, then we have to sort out ourselves first before complaining against the decree of Allah. Because, and before criticizing others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to understand his tawheed. And this is 
the most important part of our religion. Unfortunately, vast majority of the Muslims today, they have neglected this subject. And they are so-called Muslims who believe or who think that there is no need to even discuss the matter of aqeedah. And people even think that if you were to discuss the matters and the subject of aqeedah, it will cause problem amongst the Muslims. So if a Muslim, so-called Muslim, is committing shirk, let him continue committing shirk. If a so-called Muslim continues calling upon other than Allah, he never prays, he never knows how to beg Allah all he knows is that whenever he's afflicted by any calamity he, need, he needs to turn back to his saint and his peer if this is the concept and then on the other hand we say let them as long as they are within the fold of Islam let them be my dear brothers and sisters in Islam we need to know our Lord Allah Ikram the Tawheed and the oneness of Allah Jalal Ikram and the declaration, the testimony of the oneness of Allah. This is the very first point by which a person enters into the fold of Islam. If a non-Muslim, someone who never believed in Islam, if he or she wants to embrace the religion of Islam, we never ask them that if you start performing your five daily prayers and you start giving in charity and you go to Mecca and you perform Hajj and Umrah and you fast during the month of Ramadan, you become a person of good character and good akhlaq, you will be a Muslim. No. The very first thing we ask them that you have to declare the oneness of Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. People enter into the fall of Islam by declaring and testifying the oneness of Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram. And we have seen so many people entering into the fall of Islam by testifying the oneness of Allah Dhul Jalal Ikram. But have we ever asked ourselves that did we ever understood the meaning of the, this testimony? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. How many times the word la ilaha illallah is repeated every single day? Each time when we hear Adhan, the Mu'addin says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. When he stands before Salah, he calls the Iqama again, he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. We begin our Salah and we continue with our Salah. In the sitting, the final sitting, in the first sitting in our Salah, we also repeat, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. We say again and again and again and again, and we stand before Allah and we promise Allah, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for assistance. But why is this? That when we conclude the salah, we neglect everything and we forget everything. And we even forget our promise that we made to Allah. That, O oh Allah, you alone we ask for assistance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability to understand His oneness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to know and understand his names, his beautiful names. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا Allah says, Allah belongs to Allah, the beautiful names. So call upon Allah by these beautiful names. If you were to truly understand the meanings of the names of Allah, and then you raise your hands when you are afflicted by calamities, you, you raise your hands and you call upon Allah. Oh Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Ghafoor, Ya Ghafar, Ya Tawab, Ya Shakir, Ya Alim, Ya Khabir, Ya Sami, Ya Basir. You know the meaning of these names and then you call upon Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised in the Quran, Ud'uni yastajib lakum. Call upon me and I promise that I will answer your call. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand his tawheed. إنه سميع قريب مجيب إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من
من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك الصحة والعفة والأمانة وحسن الأخلاق اللهم اهدنا لأحسن الأخلاق لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت واصرف عنا سيئها لا يصرف عنا سيئها إلا أنت اللهم من أحييته منا فأحييه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك وطاعتك ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصل اللهم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين